Hi right, guys and welcome back to the channel. Sunday morning, um, raining overnight. Uh, so uh, everywhere is wet. The frame has been outside for about a quarter of an hour, that's wet. I'm just now assessing the um, stand. That is freed up. If you're not sure how to free it up, put a bit of WD-40 in the pin on the bottom and work the seat post into that stand and just move it back and forth and that will free up if it was seized. Um, at this stage, I'm building the wheels on. As you can see, the front wheel is on with the forks and the top nut is holding the forks in place. Obviously no bearings in. I'm just assessing if the forks are straight and the wheels run true and spin nicely. Um, the back wheel is now on. Well, I'm now putting it on, as you can see. Obviously no tyres and tubes on, as you can make out for yourself, but I'm just putting the back wheel on now. Um, just just seeing if if a back wheel spins nice, um, which it looks as if it does, because obviously I've not tested the wheels yet in terms of um, spinning. Uh, yeah, so close up now of the back wheel and the spoke protector, make sure that's not bent or cracked. I'm just now assessing the inside of the wheels, uh, where the rim tape is, looks to be original rim tape. Um, and just looking at where you have a wheel spin, as you can see now, nice, nice straight wheel. Um, on the fact that the back has had a weld, well, the, the weld has popped out the tube. Um, I came to the conclusion, is there anything else wrong with this bike? Is other wheels buckled, other wheels bent? And sadly not, they're all right. Right, we're now into the weld area. So that has clearly popped out of its weld so that top tube has popped out from the rear of the frame and um, I'm going to now show you guys a really close up image of that weld and what is required to do that work. Uh, I'll be doing the work myself as I described in yesterday's video. Um, that will be something that I can learn and learn new skills with. The seat tube is good in the frame. Um, the gear, where the gears go, that's not broken. So, yeah, on well, the fact that the wells popped out, it's had a wheelie, as some kid probably smashed it over a curb. So ultimately, let's check the front forks, they're okay. Um, yeah, all okay, all okay. I'm quite pleased at this stage, really pleased um, with the frame. Um, the front wheel is stiff, the axle stiff. Um, so this is probably the first time in a long time that wheel has been on and spinning. It now spins nice, it runs, and it's a smooth wheel. WD-40 in that wheel um, to free it up and, and it's spinning really nice. It's, and it's running through. Um, and also I've now got a chance to see how my cleaning has gone up around the sides of that wheel and obviously the middle bits to do. Rim tape's good, no major holes. I am pleased with this bike. At the minute, at the minute, things though take a turn for the worst. So just having a quick coffee and assessing my um, abilities and feeling quite proud of myself for achieving something <laughs> I can relate to. That's good. Um, now these bars I picked up, as I explained, with those two chopper frames. Um, the bloke said 30 quid, I said I'll take it. And I was aware they were slightly bent, to be fair, but I thought to myself, nah, that'll be fine. That'll be okay. Well, I can work with them. And um, yeah, so yeah. I don't know how many times I look at them, they still would be bent, wouldn't they? Um, put them into a frame, and just about now, I thought, oh dear me. They ain't gonna go down any further than that. They are bent. Now, I can put them in a vise, or I can just get a new pair. That is now more work to do to this bike, more expense, more of a headache. And with the Space Blue, I've had enough of headaches. And um, I wasn't over pleased with these bars being bent. Not bad condition to be fair, um, on the top bit, 
but a bit of rust around that stem bolt, but um, ultimately the bars are bent. So, um, no, I don't know what to do with these. Yeah, I just want to explain to you that it's going to be more, more, more work. Um, we're now into the bracket area that the the lamp, not the lamp, the brake the bracket, and just have another little quick look around the frame and, um, and wheels and looking at the hub. Um, obviously needs cleaning, but the hub's not split or cracked from what I can see, and. Um, it is, you know, it's it's workable. It's workable. Setback, the bars have set me back a bit because I was hoping to get away with those bars being all right, but the bars have set me back. Um, the hub is okay. All these bits, nuts and bolts, you know, the, the, the locking nut, the top nut fits. Um, the lamp bracket, I've got one of them anyway, a spare one, but the lamp bracket's good. As you can see there, um, on the top there, the bar's rusted. So I'm not over worried the bar's don't fit because ultimately I want to get a fresh pair, but pretty cheesed off. I have to now spend more money on this bike. Um, what can you do? What can you do? But um, yeah, please, please, please. Uh, the wheels, the wheels, when I clean up wheels, I always find that they look cleaner when they're moving. The back one looks lovely when it moves. Look, it's just these little bits in the middle. So I'll get a flat, one of my subscribers mentioned a flat drill brush, like a little 25 mil, I think he said, a flat a flat one. I've got one of them. So to so add we'll to the, the list of parts I now need, the handlebars, obviously, as I've just explained, are bent, so they won't go in properly. I've now kind of discovered that this tube frame has something like stopping the city bar from going in, in fully. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that now. So this city bar here, I purchased uh, a while ago as a spare, because it was cheap. I'll be using that one because the sissy bar that came with the bicycle, with the top of frame, uh, which is up here somewhere. Just excuse the mess in the garage. Um, this has got, this is slightly bent there, although I didn't think it was, but close inspection it is. Also, as I might have explained earlier on, there's some little, there it is, there's some little marks there, little little indentations and grooves. So that's going to affect. Just uh, you see that, guys? That's going to that one's more more obvious to see. That's going to affect the city bar going in. So I just use this one as a blank one. Push the bar in, and this side goes down nicely to a good, a good length into the frame, into the tube. This side gets stuck, so I've now got to drill into here to release some sort of debris or indentation that is stopping the bar going in fully. Okay, so you want metal on metal drill piece. So get a standard drill, metal on metal. And um, when you put the drill piece in, you can feel... Uh, something stopping it from going down it can be the slightest slightest bit of debris whether it be a piece of um metal or a bit of damage to a tube but just gently and well, not gently but you need to do it properly but just get that drill piece in and just work it in and and you'll see the results when that bar goes into the frame and and it is rewarding i found that out of the space blue right let's go back into the video so that one goes in I don't know what you can see, guys. There's no torch I can use, but something is stopping the bar from going into that tube. There's no obvious damage to that section of the frame. Obviously, it still needs further deep cleaning, but I want to do the structural work 
make sure everything can fit in before I fully clean it because obviously you all use you'll pick up dirt as you build it up but um yeah sourcing the problem working out why that's the thing with um these chopper bikes uh they're great to work on because you can learn so many new skills and work out for yourself why something doesn't work and then deal with it and fix it and and learn when you're using a city bar into the frame because you don't know the history of a bike just put some oil some grease some lubricant on these tubes on these bars to make everything go in nice and easy With a bit more time, I can do that. That'll be all right. But I've just got to do some bit more work on that tube, a bit more drilling. Um, I don't know what's inside there. I can't get any light into that tube. But um, we'll crack on with that later on and see what happens. Right, let's move on to that parts bundle because that parts bundle isn't as impressive as what I was to believe okay let's crack on with what we got to build it up with right excuse me tight um space i'm working in here i've got the four chopper bikes lined up against the wall i'm now going through the parts bundle um i separated it up into salvageable bits I can use for this prismatic and is not as much as I expected or imagined or hoped for. Um, in there there's a little um, bag of, of bolts, little box of bolts that's it, um, that aren't really good for anything really. Um, I'll keep them but ultimately these are parts I've got to work with. So we have Two sissy bar springs. That's it. I'll bring you closer in a tick. Two sissy bar springs. We got a seat post. No, a stem post, but not the stem nut. Let's bring you closer. Hang on. That's it. So like I just said, sissy bar springs. They will clean up nice, they're not cracked, bent, got some nice spring to them. They're okay, so city bar springs are good. We got a pair of cotter pins. Now these, not sure what cotter pins are. Those who are new to the channel, cotter pins go into these here. So this goes on to the crank. So this is a crank arm. That goes onto a bottom bracket and a cotter pin goes into there to hold it in place. That's a cotter pin. Now these go in nicely and these will be saved and used on this prismatic build. Cotter pins are good. Stem bolt, but not the stem bolt nut. We're missing that. So we can add a stem bolt nut to an ever-growing list of things that we need. We got a falcon clip or falcon clip. Now this clips onto the bottom of a frame down here. There it is. It clips onto that, and then the gear cable comes down the tube, down the frame, into there, and then that holds the gear cable in place. So that's a good used salvageable salvageable part that will clean up nice. So that's good. We've got a seat clamp, but not a seat clamp R nut. I've got a spare seat clamp, I think, in my in my parts drawer. In there somewhere, there's one. I've got a stem bolt as well, but, but not a stem bolt. So yeah, there's bits in there. I'll just go through this 
in my own time and just see what I can save. But um, yeah, so we've got a seat clamp, we've got sissy bar cups and springs, we've got sissy bar sleeves, we've got two of the, so there's one, another one somewhere, I can see it. We've got two, um, what are you called? Bolts for the seats, acorn nuts. We've got two acorn nuts, another one somewhere. Um, we've got brake levers, as I said, and brakes there. So all the brakes are good. We've got the brake stays on the front and on the back. So yeah, brakes are complete. I also noticed, sadly, I've got a bent crank arm. So if you look at that there, you can see the bend is quite significant. So this bike, if this crank arm is correct to the prismatic, this bike has had a hard, hard life before it got abandoned. Those pedals are worn. So it certainly had some mileage on it. It certainly had some mileage. Look, they are worn. And if, you can, if I consider, or if I compare a worn pair to a pair that isn't as worn, which I've got somewhere. Sorry guys, here you are. So this is a pair I will be using. Now there's some really good tread on them and the ends are brighter. So yeah, and also they have the right age because these are long reflector pedals. The Mark, the early Mark 1 crossovers and the Mark 1s had short reflectors. These are long reflectors, so correct to the bike this is a mark ii prismatic so so we've got some long reflector pedals to go on so i'm not worried about these i mean i'll keep these because they'll become handy but ultimately i also need you can see the bend there look yeah that's probably better ultimately i need a new crank arm to go with the rest of the bits i need so ultimately to sum it up Decent prismatic frame with a weld I'm aware of. Wheels are fine, they run true. They'll come up nice. I've already started, as you know. The chain guard is good. But the sissy bar will go in with about probably about an hour's work and drilling into that tube frame, like I did with Space Blue. That Space Blue has been a pain since I got it. But the amount of stuff I learned from that Space Blue in, in building and my patience as well. I'm so more patient with bikes now since that space blew, I tell you. Um, I I'm, I'm need various bolts, as you know. On eBay, you can buy like a brand new um, whole nut and bolt kit. Stainless steel, not rusted, not brand new. So I, can, I might do that. I think about 18, 20 quid. So the, the chain guard bolts, the mud guard bolts, the brake bolts, you know, all these bits here. Anything I need, I can just grab one of them. Uh, really pleased, you know, to, you know, same about the anabars, to be fair. Those anabars, I could, you know, I didn't want extra expense. I can get a decent pair of used handlebars for 60, 65 quid. You can buy a brand new, brand new Mark IV handlebars that will go into the Mark II. Hundred pound ish, you might lucky if you get them for 80, 85 to 95, but ultimately, that's another expense along with a seat. I did consider um breaking that space blue because that's a cracking seat on that, just to save me a bit of cash when building up this prismatic. But then, what's the point? Everything I've done that space blue is just now, you know, what I mean, I'm not disappointed. I'm actually pleased that I can now, I know the full extent of what I need. So, we need handlebars, 
we need seat. We need the one, two, three, Sturmy Archer gear selector and gear cable. We need tyres, that's fourth, and tubes, tyre stroke tubes, that's four. Tyres and tubes, 40 quid, yeah? Handlebars, this is just a guess, 80 pound, that's 120. A seat, 100 quid, that's 220. Gears, 150, if you're lucky, 370. Nuts and bolts, 30 quid, 400 pound. I need to put into his prismatic. That's just a guess. A guess. So, a lot, a lot of money needs to be put into his prismatic. And I will do it. I will build it up. But ultimately, the content of the minute is about getting this bike as built as to the extent I can, cleaning. Um, Assessing what I need. I've done that. I've assessed what I need. But yeah, a lot of work to do. And I'm going to bring you guys, going to show you all of it. Um, we are at the end now of this video. So thank you for watching. Uh, comment, leave a like. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you soon on the next one. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a lovely weekend. Cheers.